welcome. It's good to have you. And it's good Thank to you, see Bonnie. you as always. But same uh, here. You know, um, you, as we said, you, you, you came here in 2017. And I remember you coming because it was very exciting, you know, that we were, uh, and I know Dr. Sahal was very excited because of, of what you already were doing in, in science and medicine. But looking at your background, and you've been all over the world working. Um, and so, you know, really, and this is the first that you've really worked here in the US and, and here, uh, you know, in Pittsburgh, of course. But uh, with, with your training and education along as you were you know, growing up in India and, and doing the things that, that sort of lead us to get into our, our careers, at some point you decided to get into medicine. At some point you decided that that was also something you wanted to do and, and pursue you know, uh, academic medicine. What are the things that led you to, to make that your path? Yeah, so I, Lonnie, I decided pretty much, you know, in, in middle school, where we don't have, you know, elementary school and middle school and high school in India, but I'm just sort of counting that way. I was in grade six or seven when I decided that I'm going to be a physician. Um, basically, I was always very impressed uh, whenever I used to go to a physician's office that this is a kind of profession, um, which is, you know, which brings in all the glory. Um, and you also have this, this sense of obligation towards the society. Um, that always attracted me, uh, you know, and I had, you know, I remember telling my father and, and a close friend of his, an uncle, um, that, hey, I've made up my mind, I'm gonna be a physician. And, and you know, thankfully they took me seriously. And, and you know, thanks to my parents, um, that I'm here today. It's been it's been a really really long journey, but you know we made it. And it's not about just coming to the United States of America. Um, you know, I was born in a in a in a small village uh, in India uh, at my grandmother's place. I always joked about this that you never even bothered to take my mom to the hospital. You've handled everything at home. Um, and then from there, you know, going to a school in a small town and going to a med school in a slightly bigger city, and then going to All India Institute of Medical Sciences, which was a landmark. It's still one of the best med schools in Southeast Asia, uh, one of the best ophthalmology training programs in the world. Wow. Um, so that, you know, each milestone kind of prepared me and my family to sort of go ahead and achieve something bigger. Uh, but all along, uh, I think it was my training in Delhi and Ames that sort of, you know, solidified my research in academic uh, research. Um, I, I was always interested in seeing patients. I was always interested in listening my, to my patients' stories. But I think, you know, Ames had such a big influence um, on, on my, the way I wanted to practice that I had always made up my mind that I'm not going to go and, and work in a, in a hospital uh, and, you know, just or not, not that that's not a bad thing obviously you still look after the patients but i wanted to do more for my patients i wanted to look at their problems and how to sort them out uh, from bench to bedside so i think it as i said it's been a long journey but you know and still ongoing you know hopefully pittsburgh is is the final stop <laughs> you know we are happy here the whole family and that's this great. is a fantastic department um so i think that's uh, that's it for now well, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping the same, you know, and, and you're very involved and, in, you know, and very active in, in the clinical research as well as some of the, the other bench research and other things that are happening. And, you know, without getting a whole lot of detail, because we'll save some of that for the webinars and other things that we do. And, and I'd love to do some on, on your research, particularly keratoconus is a topic I know that you're really interested in. And, and of course, you're on the cornea um, team that's doing the corneal lab stem cell work. But just give us a highlight of, of sort of the, the things that you're real excited about, about your own particular research. So uh, fortunately, and you, know, you can also say that unfortunately, the problems that I saw as a resident in India, which is you know, a developing country with huge population in terms of cornea, they are, they've been the same. You know, I've been to Australia, I still saw patients, you know, lamenting on lack of treatments, a lot of infections. We saw more herpetic keratitis. 
uh, contact lens keratitis, you know, patients going blind from, from corneal trauma. Uh, when I moved to Hong Kong, it was still the same. You know, people looked different, but they had the same issues. Wow. Um, and now I'm here and it's, I, it feels like the, the magnitude of the problem has never been bigger. Mm. Uh, you know, so that's what prompted me to focus on these particular areas of research. Keratoconus has always been, you know, my, my top priority. Uh, you know, it's a condition of the cornea where the cornea becomes progressively thin. It affects the teens and it can go on until you are 50 or 60 years old. Um, there have been some landmark uh, treatments, uh, new treatments that have been available, uh, have been made available for keratoconus. But still, at the end of the day, we can't do much other than corneal transplant. So, you know, uh, we started with the help from Ionier Foundation, obviously. We started this uh, corneal regenerative uh, program uh, to help our patients un uh, with keratoconus to understand this disease, to help us to sort of understand the basics of this, this disease so we can, we can come up with, the, with newer treatment modalities to treat keratoconus patients. One... Um, the other thing that we have we have, we see a lot is uh, corneal infections. Mm -hmm. uh, the the cause has changed. In India, we used to see more trauma. People used to come, you know, from farming uh, to industrial accidents. Here, we see more contact lens related infections. But at the end of the day, in in all these groups, the patients end up losing their sight, and again, they would need a corneal transplant. So we are working again, you know, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, corneal stem cells and regenerative programs to see if we can reverse the scarring on the cornea. The cornea is a unique organ because it doesn't have blood vessels of its own. Scars that are on the cornea, it's very difficult to get rid of them other than doing a transplant. So having something in the pipeline that can potentially reverse the scarring and give some hope and vision to the patient, that's, that's, uh, that would be some, some good research. Right? And we hope we're going to get there in the next five years, if not earlier. Well, if, you know, that's something I know that we all are hoping for and, and working hard on and, and would all be excited to see that happen as well. And you've already had a chance, you know, um, you're, you're still young in your career, I think I can say, but um, I, you've already had a chance to do a lot. And I, I think that what you're doing, you know, uh, may lead to some big discoveries in the future. If you could highlight something that you've already done that, that just already stands out to you as something that you're really, really proud of, what would you tell us that would be? Well, you told me I can speak my mind. I think there are only <laughs> two things I'm proud of. Uh, one of them is 12 years old and the other one is seven years old. Oh. <laughs> um, of course, uh, you know, I, I love my patients. We always have been told since I was a resident that remember that you spend 70% of your time with the patients, with the, with the staff. Um, I really like the way all of us interact and take care of the patients. Um, I, you know, it's, when, did, so when I was a resident, we used to work six and a half days a week. When I went to Australia for my fellowship, it, it was cut down to five days a week. And I couldn't <laughs> believe myself. I had nothing to do on a Saturday. I always worked six and a half days a week. And, you know, we started to go back on Saturday to look at a few patients because I, I didn't feel comfortable, you know, not doing, not seeing my patients on Saturday. Um, the same happens here now, you know, there's something that always comes up on a Saturday or on a, on a holiday. So I think the interaction with patients, um, when patients realize that this is, there's this whole team, so much goes into every single patient ensuring that their outcomes are fantastic when they realize that and they genuinely, you know, they, they are grateful. I think that's, that's when you feel that the decision that you took when you were in middle school, that was absolutely right. Wow. So I think that's one thing that's, uh, that's really, you know, I'm grateful for that. Well, you know, I, I, that's very well said. And I think kind of in a sense, um, what I like to hear also is just how, you know, the, as you mentioned, you know, the whole team collaborates and it is really, you know, oftentimes, you know, a, a team effort taking care of patients just with the people in the clinic, but also, you know, um, your colleagues in, in, in medical practice. 
we're growing a lot here. We're growing a lot in Pittsburgh. We've added a lot of new physicians and certainly a lot of new research teams. And, and, uh, and as we mentioned, we're really focused on, on some exciting things in the area, the areas that you're working on. Um, what can you say about that in terms of, you know, uh, what you see and maybe what you would like to see this become in the future here in Pittsburgh and, and maybe as it relates to even things that you'd like to accomplish yourself in that, in, uh, in what we can do here in Pittsburgh? Yeah, well, that's, that's a very difficult question to answer. You know, um, I think, I think what makes us special here um, is that there are a bunch of like-minded people and I would like to uh, give a special shout out to the chairman. Um, when I was looking at places to come, you know, to come and join, there were obviously a few options and, you know, he was one of the main reasons that I came to the department. Uh, he still has this vision of taking the whole department to a new level. Um, he, he's a difficult person to work with. He's very nice, but he makes you work hard, which is uh -huh. a great thing. Yeah, you know? I, uh, true. I always joke to people, I don't, now I don't miss home because you work <laughs> hard now. Uh -huh. um, he's, uh, so I think, I think the, the whole, the gamut of researchers and clinician scientists and clinicians, even the staff, the allied staff, we are working towards this common goal of one, achieving excellence in patient care. I always thought UPMC, especially ophthalmology department, I can speak for my own department, had provided excellent uh, care to our patients. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, you can always make it better every single day. The second is backing that up with some solid research. Mm -hmm. So when patients come in and when they tell you, you, we've heard very good things about UPMC ophthalmology. We are here because we've been told that you can give us what no one else can give us. Um, so, and that's, that's all, not only hearsay, it comes from solid evidence. It comes from the work we do, we work, we, we publish, we present, you know, the work that appears in, in, you know, hundreds of scientific publications that are churned out of the department every single year. Um, the integration of lab staff and the clinicians, that is, that is the most fantastic thing that has happened in the past three years since I've been here. I know Dr. Sayan has not been here for too long as well. He's hired some fantastic researchers from around the world. These, these are hand-picked people, and I'm proud to say I'm, I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. What we would like to see uh, as a department uh, is, is to take ophthalmology to a really, really high level uh, sort of a branch where, where people from all around the world, they come in to Pittsburgh to, to get excellent eye care. Um, and, you know, I can't think of any division inside our department who does not have the ability to provide that. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Everyone's just amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, for my own division, you know, Deep Daliwal is the division chief. You know, it's such a cohesive unit. Uh, it, you know, we work all work together and we share the patients. When mm -hmm. patients walk in, they have, they've got absolutely, you know, you know, the absolute confidence in, in the patient care that would be provided to them. So I think we, we just want to take it to further than this, make it better uh, every year. Um, and, you know, we really hope that in the next few years, we are able to, to get more like-minded people to work with us. Uh, we are able to get more funding uh, mm -hmm. so we can hire people uh, mm -hmm. from around the world. You are you know, well aware that, you know, I came from Hong Kong and we have a researcher who heads the lab who came from Singapore. I was working right. with him initially. So it's, it's just getting, as I said earlier, handpicking people um, according to what they are, they have mastered and sort of convincing them to come here and work with us so that we can, we can all make this whole dream a reality. Yeah, you know, that that is very, very well put. And and I think, again, um, you know, something that, that we're all working very hard to uh, accomplish, but but again, also something that that we really feel we have, you know, uh, a unique position here in Pittsburgh to become. Um, and uh, and I, I, I have to say, and it, 
you should be proud. And I think, I think uh, all of our, our faculty who've, you know, uh, went through this process to be brought on, you know, by Dr. Sahel and, and as we've grown this team, you know, it really has, it is really a spectacular group and, and it's really melded well with what we already um, had here in Pittsburgh. So you're, you're certainly um, in, an example of that and someone who's been just, you know, terrific to work with myself. And, uh, and nice to have you on here today, just to, again, so that our, our um, constituents can learn a little bit about you besides just what they read in your bio. And it's always a pleasure. Thank so. you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Okay. Ha have a great day. You do. Thank you. Bye-bye.